This is the third part of the question from Corman. What is the relationship between the running time of insertion sort and the number of inversions in the input array? So let's let's assume that our input array A has n elements. So the indices vary from 1 to n. And let's focus on how insertion sort works assuming that there is already a sorted portion so a few elements have already been sorted and we are at the stage where we are trying to insert the jth element into the sorted portion so we want to see how uh, we want to see if there is any relationship between the operations that insertion sort is doing and the existence of inversions in the array. So what's happening, let's just focus on this portion of the array because in the jth step when we're trying to insert the jth element, we're not going to be touching this section of the array beyond index j. So let's imagine the array to have uh, for practical purposes just a length of j and Let's try to see what is changing in this array as insertion sort tries to insert the jth element. If you recall, we, we first pull out the jth element into a temporary variable and then we start scanning this sorted portion from index j minus 1 to the left and in each step, we are comparing the element that we are at currently with the value of the jth element. And as long as, as long as we are find, we are seeing that the elements we are scanning have a value greater than the jth element, we know that the jth element must be appear. The the correct location for the jth element must be to the left, further to the left. So the the right location for a of j is the place where we first encounter an element that is less than a of j. So this right location for j of a of j is such that to the left of that location all elements are less than a of j and to the right of this location all elements are greater than a of j. This is what this is the boundary between these two uh, portions of the array and this is where a of j needs to go. But until we hit this boundary, we are encountering elements that are greater than a of j and we are shifting them one step to the right. Now, if you... So let's consider an arbitrary element here. And let's consider an arbitrary element here. So I'm going to call, let's say the index of this is small a, this is the index of this is small b. So let's try to explore whether a comma j is an inversion or not. So is a comma j an inversion? The second question we want to examine is, is b comma j an inversion? And the reason for asking these two questions is we want to find a relationship between what insertion sort is doing and the number of inversions in the input array. So let's just begin by asking these two questions and seeing where it leads to. Since the element at this index small a, so the value of the element itself will be a of small a, since this value is less than a of j, this won't be an inversion. a comma j won't be an inversion because the element that are th the, the left element which is capital A of little a is less than a of j. Okay, so a comma j is not an inversion because the left element is uh, 
smaller than the right element but if you look at b comma j we know that the value of the bth element which is a of b is greater than the value of the jth element so the element on the left has a value that is larger than the element on the right so yes p comma j is an inversion now try to imagine a snapshot of this section of the array before we start this scan okay, at at the, at the time at a time before the scan starts the number of inversions in this section of the array is going to be equal to the length of the length of this chunk the length of this chunk where the elements in the chunk are values that are greater than a of j but at the end at the at the very end of uh this the the while loop that insertion sort uses to scan left we are going to insert a of j at its right location at that point this entire section of the array from indices 1 to j is going to be sorted and we have seen in a previous problem that when an, when if you are looking at a sorted array there are no inversions in a sorted array so the number of inversions at the beginning of the jth iteration or the uh, the linear scan is equal to uh i think we used a variable t of t sub j to denote the length of this particular chunk so i'm going to just use that same name to be consistent the number of inversions at the beginning of the linear scan is going to be t sub j why because every element in this chunk is going to create an inversion with a of j because every element in this chunk has a value greater than a of j okay so this t sub j spans the indices from this element over here to j minus 1 now note that because the first j minus 1 elements are already sorted there are going there are no, there are not going to be any inversions involving elements within this range because it's sorted and in a sorted array there are no inversions so there are no inversions if you just focus on the first j minus 1 elements it's only the jth element which causes some inversions to be created and specifically it uh, the inversions that are created are created between the elements that are greater than j the the elements that are greater than a of j and a of j itself now what happens at the end of the while loop the number of inversions when at the point when a of j is inserted into the right location is going to be zero because once a of j is inserted into the right location we have a sorted we, the, the sorted portion has a length of j and within the sorted portion there are no there are not going to be any inversions so what has happened is that in the process of running this iteration of insertion sort where we insert the jth element into its right spot the number of inversions has decreased from t sub j down to 0 and if you recall when we if you recall the pseudo code for the insertion sort algorithm the complexity of this iteration is basically given by is is basically determined by this variable t sub j ignoring the constants of course but the 
the length of this chunk of elements that are greater than a of j is the number of times the while loop is going to run the while loop which is responsible for the scanning and shifting so the number of comparison operations between a of j and these elements in the chunk is going to be approximately t sub j maybe one more when we compare this element with a of j and the number of swap operations is going to be equal to t sub j because every time we see an element in this portion we are going to shift it to the right uh, so the number of shift operations, sorry, not swap operations, the number of shift operations is going to be equal to T sub J as well. So the number of inversions, if the number of inversions at the beginning of insertion sort was capital I, it's going to go down to zero. And We've seen that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the number of inversions at the beginning of an iteration and the time taken to, to by insertion sort to execute that iteration. So the relationship between the running time of insertion sort and the number of inversions in the input array is that the number of inversions in the input array is basically equal to the number of steps in the running time of insertion sort. Because in each step of insertion sort, in each step within every iteration of insertion sort, we are doing a comparison operation and a shift operation. And in the process of comparing and shifting one element to the right, we are in effect destroying the inversion between which was which existed between that element and the jth element. Because by shifting this, by shifting an element one location to the right, we are saying that A of J should go to the left of that element because the empty spot has now been created in its place. Right? So if I if I have an element and I shift it to the right, this spot is going to become empty. So this is now the candidate spot for the jth element to go into. And if it doesn't go into this spot, it's going to go into somewhere, into a spot further to the left. But the point is that before I, before I scanned this element, there was an inversion existing between this element and the jth element. But once I shift this element to the right, it's as if I have destroyed that inversion because now I have ascertained that the jth element is going to go to the left of this element, whatever that element was. So every time I execute a comparison and a shift operation, I am conceptually destroying an inversion that existed earlier. And so the running time of insertion sort, the number of steps that insertion sort executes is equal to the number of inversions that existed in the input array. 